Hi everyone, welcome to the fifth episode of our Mentor Masterclass series. Today we're joined by Gaurav Sharma. Now, Gaurav is a TEDx speaker, a mentor, and a social entrepreneur on a mission to make Swachh Bharat a reality. Now, as CEO and co-founder of Thank You Enterprise, he envisions on creating a sustainable waste management solution, which are easy to use, fully automatic, affordable, and environmentally sustainable. Now, today we're going to be talking about clean technology and waste management and how it's evolved over the past few decades and what the future has in store for it. Gaurav, it's a pleasure to have you with us and thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Nasir. I mean, I am really glad to be here and equally excited as well in order to uh, discuss the future of waste management and clean tech and about how we can contribute towards the cause. Yeah. So Gaurav, can you uh, just briefly walk us through your background and your professional journey so far, including how you came to be an entrepreneur and a startup mentor yourself? Sure. Uh, I think uh, there is a very important incident I really want to ensure uh, to talk about, which actually brings me here. And uh, I would say when I was in grade 10th, I had an opportunity uh, to make a science project and I was uh, asked to go to uh, regional levels directly for the exhibition and there I was again further selected and from there and there I was asked that you need to travel to Chennai for a national level exhibition. So I spoke to my parents and my parents were like uh, I think it's really important that uh, you focus on your uh, exams because this is class 10th and which is a board and you understand how Indian uh, uh, I mean education system works. So I believe 10-15 uh, days later another fellow schoolmate of mine who didn't got selected but he went as a proxy on my behalf is getting a certificate on the stage. So this was a kind of a moment which uh, shook me hard and which made me realize that uh, I think rigor is something which is uh, uh, which really takes a lot of uh, pressure uh, on you in terms of whatever you do. So when I came to engineering uh, so I actually came Jaipur to do my engineering in information technology. In a year and a half I realized that coding is not meant for me and it's not something I really enjoy. So I left my college uh, and uh, I started working with uh, certain youth run international organizations and I was understanding different aspects about uh, let's say social diversity or understanding uh, I mean uh, I mean I was extremely shy so I believe that the kind of exposure I got to meet people from India and abroad has actually opened me up and uh, made me realize that uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, there is, I mean, there is much more beyond than just being an introvert, being an individual. So this is where I think my, my self-discovery journey started. And I've been a firm believer of self-awareness. Uh, be if you are into a job or if you're into business, eventually I believe that self-awareness is something which really helps. And if you take actions on it. So this is where, uh, when I start, started working with the organizations, uh, and then I happened to join one of the co-working spaces in India. So when I went for the job, I didn't have a degree and all, and I had a package three times more as compared to my fellow engineers who got placed into TCS and Infosys. So honestly, I, I, I do realize the power of uh, values, skill set, and uh, your, uh, uh, let's say knowledge. And uh, I do believe that, uh, I mean, I mean, degree is just a mere uh, document and it's not like I don't still have a degree. It's just that when uh, I went for working there in five months also, I realized that this is not something I want to do and I want to have my own venture because I, ha I have the passion for creating things and I do understand uh, the kind of uh, uh, dopamine you get uh, once you create different ideas and you work on them. So this is where I started my own venture. And when I was back here, I also did my degree. So I finished 32 exams due in just five months and uh, Still, I believe that I haven't went my college to collect my degree. <laughs> my parents and me, I, we do have this dialogue often. But then I, I often say is that uh, when you think that there's a plan B, eventually plan A fails. So when I know that, okay, I don't have degree document with me or and going back there and doing that groundwork is going to be difficult. Eventually, you put that hard work in terms of whatever you're doing today and you figure out ways in order to make your own venture successful. So I believe that this is where I, I came into overall. And uh, I, I mean, waste management, something we yeah, definitely I'm working on as a cause. And, uh, but I also feel that things which are challenging really fascinates me and working on different ideas. And in fact, when I keep consuming a lot of knowledge and information, 
connection and I do meet a lot of uh, people who are doing really amazing stuff in life. So that really helps in terms of uh, you being equipped with the understanding about uh, how you can help people and how you can uh, help startups in terms of making uh, the mis making different mistakes as compared to what you did. Uh, because uh, let's say I, I, I'm a first generation into business. I mean, in my entire family, there is no one into business if I see from my both sides, paternal and maternal. So I do believe that there are different challenges you face. I mean, for me, even having that small, hard conversation with a client used to be a really big thing back in the past. So, uh, I mean, when I have overcome all of that, I've been here. So I believe that why not to share the, the similar wisdom with people and why not to help them make new mistakes. Interesting. Now, if you could delve a little more deeper into uh, Thank You Enterprise, which is your waste management solutions uh, and uh, organization. So how are you trying to create an impact uh, through this and what exactly uh, are you guys doing? Sure. Uh, so when I left my job, uh, I had a different understanding that I wanted to create uh, an on-demand uh, Uber-based model for waste management. But then honestly, I realized that the problem with waste management is logistics and logistics is a cost. And when you look at the waste management as a business, it's a high volume, but low margin business. So eventually logistics uh, can't be, I mean, solution. It, you need to figure out solution to optimize the cost of logistics, right? So, uh, so this is uh, the overall has been the idea and the way we work as of now is that uh, when I, I would say when I, just try to understand the Swachh Bharat mission. It's a really good campaign in terms of awareness. And when I talk about government policies, uh, specifically for uh, for the ideas which are already ahead of time in countries like India, I believe government can only work on awareness, but there need to be private organizations who can create solutions uh, which are easy to use and also financially viable. So considering that, we realized that why not we create some solutions for uh, bulk generators, specifically like hotels, restaurants, schools, colleges, even apartment buildings and business complexes, where they can process their entire organic waste uh, into uh, energy or a biofuel within their premises, which will enable the segregation by default. Because now when I know that I can make money out of food waste, why, why not? I will start, I mean, doing segregation and eventually all your paper, plastic, glass, e-waste, uh, they, uh, they do hold... Uh, I mean, economic value. So anyways, they could be sold in the market. If the problem comes when we mix both of them, I mean, uh, the contamination uh, happens and then the decontamination cost is something which is a variable, which I mean, uh, makes this entire waste management problem as more of a complex problem. So this is where I would say that we are more into a manufacturing side. We uh, manufacture these kind of machineries and we set up with bulk generators. We also do AMC and operations for them. So that's our premium, or I would say the main model. Interesting. And you also touched upon uh, how a lot of organic wastes and uh, byproducts from many industries can be converted into energy resources such as biogas and other uh, resources. Now, with this in mind, uh, in the past few decades, how we observe modern industries sort of shifting from uh, non-renewables to uh, renewable sources of energy, and where do you see this leading in the next uh, few years? Right. So I think uh, when we talk about renewable energy, uh, I would say uh, we talk about majorly right now uh, either solar energy or let's say we talk about wind or hydro up to an extent. Uh, there are, I believe, three more elements, uh, which is one is biomass, second is uh, tidal, and one is more of a geothermal where uh, that's something not much discovery has happened in the world as of now. Uh, but then uh, definitely, I think India as a country also, we are uh, moving ahead uh, in terms of working in these grounds. And if you see specifically solar has been really, uh, I mean, we have been pioneer uh, uh, and good example for the world. Uh, but then if you also decode that more about the way how subsidies has worked or uh, initially, for example, when uh, 2011, 2012, when the technology came into the existence, the initial penetration has been low. Uh, maybe because uh, of the government policies and the subsidies around there. But then lately when you see that, okay, there is a concept of, uh, I mean, a uh, net meter where, uh, let's say, if you have a solar uh, power plant and where uh, uh, 
how much production, I mean, production and consumption you're doing accordingly you've been charged. So these kind of concepts really uh, encourage a lot of people in order to go into that. So I believe that the, the future is bright, but then it has to be a combination of uh, public, private and policy framework. True, I completely agree. And uh, especially if we look at the context of a country such as India, with uh, the current waste generation that's taking place across uh, many industries, uh, wh- how, how do you really explain the problem or define the problem statement of waste, uh, waste management in a country like India? And how would you explain this to uh, a layman? So uh, let's say I'll, I'll talk on a few numbers and I think you'll be able to decode. And I'm, I'm framing the numbers of 2011 official report where one of the reports says that India generates 62 million tons of waste a year, out of which uh, 31 million tons been picked in a year. And 11 million tons been uh, recycled a year. So if you look at the numbers, uh, we can, I mean, definitely decode that the inefficiency in terms of collection and inefficiency in terms of processing. So I believe that, I mean, there are uh, opportunities in both the grounds. And uh, if, we, if we talk specifically about waste management, uh, I will say you need to understand the entire value chain. Uh, when we talk about, let's say, uh, companies who are into production, uh, how, what kind of waste they are generating and how they are handling it. Number two is when you talk about, let's say, B2C, it's more about, let's say, at the source waste production. And then uh, it comes the segregation. Uh, then it comes the collection and then transportation and then uh, either recycling or landfilling, right? So if you see the entire chain, uh, for India, I believe that landfill has been more of a, not a, not has been a scientific solution in most of the cities because we just have a uh, an open land and we just dump the trucks there. So that has a lot of impacts. I mean, if you see, for example, heavy metal seeping down into groundwater, or uh, greenhouse ga- gases emissions happening uh, in the air and not just lying on the ground but also the more waste travels the more carbon footprint we increase so considering those grounds i believe uh, there has to be certain solutions uh, where a uh, lot of startups can work on different elements of the entire value chain uh, for example uh, let's say so when we talk about uh, let's say recycling how could we w- how how can we be more efficient in terms of effic- efficiency of recycling? I mean, for example, if I am, I have a capacity of recycling 100 tons a day, can you be a venture help me through technology where I can do 150 tons a day, right? So those certain ways can really help in terms of uh, bringing the efficiency and also reducing the cost. Because for example, if I'm able to do more, which means I'll be able to make more profit. And that profit is going to help a lot of people in the value chain itself. For example, if I'm making more money or which means I need now 150 tons a day being a recycler, which means I will, I will go down on my cost. If you look at supply and demand metrics, will I will be more willing to give you more profit to give me more waste. So eventually I believe that the entire problem is uh, more of a linked and we all are on the same board. It's just that people need to, figure out those uh, problems and fix them that way. Interesting. Now, um, uh, Gaurav, you are an entrepreneur yourself in the waste management space and you are trying to create an impact over here. Now, as someone who's worked in the space for a while, can you tell us some of the uh, challenges that would be um, specific to someone working in this sector and how do you deal with these challenges? Sure. Uh, So I would say, for example, waste management, uh, I believe uh, 2016, there is, has been a government policy has come in, which says that uh, solid waste management rules 2016. And it's a good detailed document uh, in terms of what could be done. For example, I mentioned in terms of whatever we are doing, uh, that's just uh, one point of that waste management rules. So which says that if you are a bulk generator, you need to process your waste within your premises. But the problem lies on the execution front. So my experience, uh, and this is something I've heard from uh, uh, Mr. Amit Chan, who has been, I think, ex-CEO India for Uber India. And uh, he, he mentioned somewhere at one of my interaction with him, and 
he clearly mentioned that when your technology is ahead of time, right? Like for example, I, when I talk about waste management in India, it's ahead of time. You really need to work with government. And those are the exact words which I really understood because at the end, uh, uh, if you talk about, uh, for example, let's say I have a solution, I have a technology, right? But then if there is no proper buyer, or if we, because at the end, waste management has not been an industry where uh, we have thought of investing money. I mean, when, when I talk about, uh, I mean, if I also decode, decode this into proper sales, people usually invest either in their comfort or saving their time or uh, more into the pleasure, right? So waste management is not something which comes in either of it. I mean, we have people who are taking care of it. We are we are already spending just little amount of money, and we're comfortable with it. Or even I would say that in a lot of uh, middle class and upper middle class or rich families, eventually, is the daily maid who is coming in is are I mean they are actually dealing with it, not even us directly. So uh, those way, I would say you really need to work first on the policy front with government. You need to. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, this should not be a profitable model just for you, but then it should be more of a, a for a more of a forecasting in a way that how country could become a, a more progressive, more uh, developing towards those front. And number two is more about uh, the way government can maybe uh, give certain relaxations for, let's say, uh, early movers, for example, waste management, right? Now, if you have a tender and you say, okay, uh, we want you to clean up 20 tons per day of waste of this small town. And then you also say, okay, but we want a company who is already into industry for 10 years into waste management, right? So when the industry is new itself, I believe that government need to uh, lower down certain standards. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, so I think majorly the crux is that you, when you are ahead of time, just work with government. And also on the second ground, try to get a bit more local. Uh, what I mean is that being local is, uh, Again, I mean, if, if I give you an example of, uh, let's, uh, let's take an example of Uber itself. So I believe that Uber India is the only organization or the country they run their operations where uh, they do not, uh, where they do accept cash payments. And uh, this is something because they understood that how Indian locality is and how Indian market operates. So if you really want to survive, I believe that you need to be local uh, as per the Indian markets. And you need to also adopt certain solutions in similar way. Interesting. So I think one of the key uh, points that you mentioned is the market is still uh, is still in a maturing phase right now, and the market adoption has probably not reached that level yet. And um, it's uh, for anyone who's starting off right now, one thing that they could focus on is to focus on your community and try to create an impact around you, and then you could uh, scale that up gradually. Definitely. And also, I, uh, I believe that for, uh, I mean, just to add to that, I would say that this market is not for competition. It's a collaboration. And uh, I believe that if you join hands with your fellow, uh, I mean, industry, industry people, eventually you will be able to raise your voice very clearly with government. Uh, for example, uh, there are, when I talk about waste management, there's an entire lobby in, in uh, Bangalore itself or in Indore itself where they work on a lot of policy front with local municipal corporation in terms of uh, the ethical practices of waste management. And that's something really important because I believe that these are the only two cities who are actually focusing on segregation of waste and rest all other, other cities. Uh, I mean, they, they just want to get rid, just get, get rid of the waste and just want to wrap that up. So I believe that that's the kind of uh, approach would be better. And also if you just see the, uh, the track of solar waste and now water coming up. I would say solar took little longer time while due to awareness of Swachh Bharat and the amount of money being spent, uh, I believe that the focus and even the execution has been faster. And I believe that in coming time for water, it is going to be much more faster. True. Uh, and especially with uh, water, with the uh, scarcity that we're seeing in a lot of the major cities, I think this is definitely going to be on the top of the agenda for uh, many uh, large companies. Now, uh, just moving on, um, Gaurav, so for any entrepreneur who wants to create an impact in this space, who wants to work in waste management in clean, uh, clean technologies, 
Now, how would you suggest they go from ideation to implementation? And what sort of avenues do you think they could reach out to for uh, assistance or guide or guidance or mentorship? And um, th these could be in the form of various government uh, supported grants or uh, similar programs incubators. So how do you think, uh, what sort of programs do you think they can seek assistance in and how would you suggest they go about the process? Sure, uh, I think uh, if we talk about the current time, I believe that a lot of people are fortunate enough because there are a lot of specific grants or specific, uh, I would say, incubation supports coming up for clean tech or uh, let's say particular waste management also I've seen the, in the near, near future. Uh, but then again, uh, I believe uh, money is least of the worry in the entire value chain. And I would say uh, the major thing which you need to highlight is uh, your product and people. And uh, when I'm talking about that, I mean is that one, for example, uh, I mean, for example, a lot of people I've seen doing networking here and there, going to a lot of forums, right? I have been firm believer uh, very clearly that once you have the product ready, right? It, then everything is more of a strategy to uh, grow your business. But then if you don't have a product, then everything else just overburdens you a little more and makes you more worried about what's happening around. So putting it simply, I would say first is work on your product. Uh, and this is a very simple way. Uh, if you want to collaborate with organizations or maybe understand the policy. I mean, so for example, when I mentioned very clearly that I'm just working on one point of the entire solid waste management rules in 2016. And so, which means there are different amount of rules uh, and even more specific rules for when you talk about medical waste, you talk about different kind of hazardous waste, plastic waste, uh, metal waste, glass waste, things like that. So there are different further sub policies for these kind of waste as well. So I believe that you need to understand that. Also, you need to understand your own people. I believe that uh, specifically if you're first generation or even any generation, I would say um, the key lies in the relationship building, be it your customers, be it your employees or be it your fellow friends. Uh, I believe uh, in India, it's, it's more about, uh, mouth uh, marketing as compared to any social media marketing even today. So when, when we exist in such kind of world, it's really important that uh, you communicate very effectively to people and also, uh, I mean, uh, you, you ensure that your product is flawless. I mean, when I talk about the product element, uh, you need to understand that uh, your maintenance cost needs to be low. Your product aesthetics needs to be better. And for most importantly, the functionality or the objective for which the product has been formed need to achieve that. So once you have the product ready, I believe uh, you will have a lot of support system in order to get funds and things like that. Uh, but then, yeah, I would still say that the two important pillars for me is uh, finance and money, uh, finance and people. And uh, for finance, I would still say that uh, you can change your policies in a way that uh, you want to do business. For example, uh, when I started, I started from 50,000 uh, uh, rupees only. And uh, till date, I haven't raised any capital from the market. So I would say once you have the product ready, uh, you can change your payment terms with your clients. Uh, for example, we always had the terms where 50% we take the advance while accepting the order and 50% also on the dispatch because we don't want to get into, uh, get stuck into the problems of uh, the way Indian market operates for financials. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, there are ample amount of solutions existing. And also now considering waste management is one more of, more of a promising sector. Uh, there are a lot of businesses are willing to reinvest. And uh, also, uh, I mean, investing on project to project basis. So you can always look out those options. But yeah, definitely, I mean, if you have a solid uh, product and if you really are creating a bigger social impact in terms of numbers. There are million, millions of grants available across the world where you can apply for. Sure. And um, so just to add on to a point there, so uh, what, do you, what are your thoughts on approaching CSR funds for uh, of certain waste management products? Do you see them as a good fit as a strategic partner uh, in terms of raising funding and providing uh, guidance? Or uh, do you have any uh, other thoughts on that? 
no i think uh, it's it's a really good opportunity but then you just need to understand the legal aspect of it i mean uh, in order to attain uh, csr uh, you need to provide adg or 12a certifications in return so that people can claim that this is a csr they have done and usually you only get these certifications certifications once you are registered as an ngo so coming on the legal front i would say obviously i mean if there is a will there is a way and i'll give you a very simple example uh, of one municipal corporation uh, i mean it's a bmc uh, bombay municipal corporation and uh, where certain certain community from bandra itself they reached out to them and they were like we want to get uh, waste to energy machineries uh, place but we don't have funds and uh, they knew that okay there is a, a godrej who is willing to invest their csr into it so they just connected two bodies and uh, you, you can say i mean godrej just bought those machines and gave it as a csr to them so i mean there are there are ways where you can uh, i mean just decode the legality and you can work around it but then yeah obviously for csr again i would say the lot of ngos struggling in india uh, again this is more about the network and connections you have and uh, how often you can raise money through csr that's also challenging and also in current times of pandemic uh, i believe that uh, money is uh, i mean least available in the market so that's a challenging time as well true now um, coming back to waste management solutions and the different innovative products that are coming in the market here now uh, what sort of advances in technology have you seen over the past 5 uh, to 10 years uh, which have really enabled new solutions to come into the market in terms of waste management and how do you think future entrepreneurs who want to create an impact in this space can leverage advances in technology to uh, support their vision sure uh, actually i have been uh, working on a on an article on the similar grounds and i would say i'll covered majorly six pointers where uh, i'll be able to answer both the ways where uh, i mean uh, in what happened in the previous 5 to 10 years and also what is again the future i would say that it's the same uh, solution to both of it one is uh, more of a e- more of a improved recycling rate so when we talk about re- recycling uh, the efficiency where, where i have already talked about uh, that something has been very very key parameter in the recent time and i also believe that it still has more potential for example now the transportation uh, for waste management is still not tapped properly right so still there is no concept of uh, pooling of waste there is no concept of uh, uh, i mean working on efficient transportation or maybe automation uh, in terms of collection of trucks and like that so that's that i would say uh, the possibility is still there number 2 is automated waste collection so if you see in the in the recent past where uh, uh, i mean in lots of cities this has changed now and when i talk about even jaipur as well for example we used to have these community bins where uh, the colonies you they used to have their own collection mechanism and they used to dump that waste into this collect and where there used to be a bigger vehicle coming in once a day and collecting things like that right now the collection is becoming more door to door and they are trying to uh, reduce the cost and also increase the efficiency in terms of automated collection number 3 uh, route optimization so for example there has been a lot of uh, issues in the near past that for example uh, th- there are uh, certain contractors where uh, they are claiming that okay we're taking the waste to landfill but eventually they du- they are dumping at some point c uh, in order to reduce their fuel cost so in order to not just to uh, avoid certain certain scenarios like this but also in terms of optimizing routes in order to uh, i mean increase the efficiency in terms of time and money i believe that's the second important parameter number 3 uh, sorry first was improved recycling rates second was uh, automated waste collection third was uh, route optimization number fourth i would say landfill modernization so when we talk about landfilling uh, this has been um, non scientific so far and uh, you see china and some countries where they are making beautiful gardens or some di- different different kind of uh, uh, art and art and, art and craft around waste around landfill uh, that that gives a good sense of feeling that okay this is um, not trash which i which i produced but then this is something which is which belongs to our own nature right so that kind of 
feeling is something which which really changes a lot of behavioral changes in terms of our actions and behaviors so i believe that would be number 4 number 5th i would say is enhance safety so a lot of safety tools and gears are coming now for example uh if you see a uh, lot of shit holes where usually people used to uh go in in order to clean that up still happening in a lot of parts of india and the world but then there are also a lot of drones and not new technology coming into the picture where uh they are eradicating uh, the human intervention here so i believe that where there is uh, a danger to human it should be worked upon and specifically when you do a survey around waste management waste workers usually their average life is around 39 to 40 years so i believe that this is really an alarming factor where we need to work on and last is more about the quick turnaround times for example now if you see a lot of bigger giant uh, organizations who has been into business for 30 40 60 years now they are also working on a lot of technology driven initiatives like bring a lot of mobile apps working on different kind of technologies or maybe let's say uh, i know a couple of ventures were working on uh, working on a segregation conveyor belt where uh, uh, i mean through different kind of magnets you you can segregate uh, i mean bunch of waste at the landfills or maybe there are ways where uh, if i throw even all my waste into one bin how it could be segregated in two different categories things like that so i believe that these are the overall uh, parameters where one can focus on and is going to be feature as per my understanding and uh, i think uh, something that you already covered throughout the uh, discussion so far is about the future of waste management but more more importantly the potential of waste management uh, for a country like india especially but uh, in your opinion where do you see the future of waste management in uh, let's say the next 3 to 5 years and uh, despite the potential that we have all observed in what can be done in the prob the very important problems that must be tackled uh, where do you see this going in the next 5 uh, years for next 5 years i would say uh, it's majorly just handful of things one is more of a circular economy Uh, where this concept is now coming in for example if you have seen the news today itself uh, google google claim that they are going all green in terms of their uh, initiatives so i believe that a lot of organizations are now coming again to the circular uh, economy concept in terms of uh, 3r uh, also waste to energy is one which i believe is now a, a important issue i mean for example earlier for waste man for organic waste also it used to be just waste to compost or vermi compost now there is waste to biogas waste to electricity waste to uh, bio cng waste to biofuel things like that coming already existing in the india and i believe that if they are in countries like india a lot of developing developed countries are already ahead of us as compared to that so um, that's the second aspe- aspect the third is i i would say now a lot of production agencies are coming as a responsible uh, producers uh i also believe that lot of consumers are coming as a responsible consumers but in 3 to 5 years there will be more responsibility coming from retailers and i believe that that could be a game changer in countries like india because we are very much dependent on lot of retailers and if that could be something worked upon i believe uh, the dynamics for india would change very fast interesting uh and i i think uh, one thing that i'd like to understand from you uh, gaurav is so you just re- um met touched upon the consumer right now so uh, how how have you noticed the shift in the mindset of the consumer in terms of approaching waste management over the past uh, 10 to 15 years so do you see a positive shift that's taking place uh, with uh, the population becoming younger right now and uh, if uh, so where do you see what sort of impact do you see that is having on the overall ecosystem for overall i would say uh, this has been slow still for countries like india and i will also say the reason why because for example if you if you send anyone to abroad and uh, countries where i mean countries which are extremely clean you will see people not littering around not uh, spitting around and things like that and uh, these are the behavioral changes which comes the moment we see cleanliness around right for us in india where we see a lot of piles of waste lying in our neighborhood we hardly notice there is a change 
So I believe uh, the important aspect is uh, through two ways. Uh, for one, which I am also a firm believer that being uh, into waste management, you also need to be uh, an activist around it. By activist, what I mean is that I don't want to just talk about it, but then I want to inspire people through my actions. So a lot of my friends, uh, whenever I let them out for a, a takeaway coffee and things like that. So whenever I make a gesture or action where I'm throwing things in dustbin and things like that, people started adopting it. For example, I do carry my own cutlery kit uh, where I also even have a stainless steel straw. So wherever I go to a restaurant, things like that, I carry that, I clean that up and I, I again put it back in my bag. So, and let's say this is one. I also Sorry, I think, the, I think the issue is from my end. I think there was a network. So, yeah, apologize for that. So, yeah, you, you're just saying, yeah, it's all, we need to make the change ourselves and uh, we need to really uphold our activism in ourselves. And, yeah, sorry, I'll, I'll let you uh, Sure. So, uh, I mean, I, I gave a couple of examples. So, I have my own cutlery set. I carry my own uh, water bottle, uh, which is not just plastic. So, I think these are the certain, certain things which... Uh, which says a lot of things to people who are around you uh, without you saying it. So I believe that these are the small changes uh, we need, which we need to bring in our lifestyle. And uh, luckily, I see a lot of startups working on products like on bamboo or stainless steel in India now. So that's really a good sign. And uh, this is, I think, yeah, so this is the act self-activism is the one. And also the way we can slowly, slowly shift from... Uh, Fossil fuels to re renewable sources. So I believe that could be the bigger change. Absolutely, I completely agree. Uh, so, uh, Gora, I think we've covered a lot of uh, really interesting topics uh, in this webinar. Now, just to conclude, I just have one final question. So, uh, according to you, how important is uh, social entrepreneurship, especially in a country like India, and what role do you think it plays in our society right now? Very interesting. Uh, if if I say as of now, after, I mean, during the pandemic, I would say it, the social entrepreneurship is the next big thing. And when I say that, I, I mean uh, uh, considering uh, the economy, considering uh, the people have, the amount of people have lost their jobs and the amount of people who haven't got their jobs yet. So if you see all these three economics, I believe that a lot of people... Uh, are going to start uh, their own ventures in near time and uh, bringing that factor into the existence i believe a uh, lot of healthy competition will come into the existence and uh, due to which eventually the pricing will become better the product will get better and at the end uh, consumer will benef benefit so looking looking on those grounds i believe as a country we are going to make a uh, lot of social good and uh, so yeah i mean uh, th that is one aspect also i believe that entrepreneurship uh, doesn't matter whether you create a successful uh, giant startup or not what matters is that this is more of a lifestyle and uh, the reason uh, one thing which i really admire is that i understood the difference between just having an idea and going into the execution so if this is the kind of mindset you carry in your own life Eventually, a lot of things do get easy and uh, eventually you become a better human being. So I believe that's something what we need in this time and era. And looking on those grounds, I believe uh, a lot of, lot of uh, startups are going to come into the market. A uh, lot of incubation, a lot of different kind of mentors are going to be in the market. And eventually, uh, here and there, if you see these pieces lying around, uh, and if, if there is proper framework where they can come together, I believe uh, there could be a good economic reform as well for country. Absolutely. So, I, I mean, I agree with all the points that you mentioned, and I think we are also going to see a huge increase in uh, social entrepreneurship, especially uh, with uh, the various problems that we're facing in society right now, but entrepreneurship in general as well. So great. So uh, Gaurav, I think we've uh, covered quite a bit during this session. So again, uh, I just want to thank you for taking the time out, especially on a Monday afternoon uh, in speaking to us. And uh, hope we were able to add some value to everyone uh, tuning in. Surely. Thank you very much. And I am really glad that we actually 
went deeper to understand uh, specifically clean tech and waste management, which is a very rare thing in India these days. So really True. glad to be here. True. So uh, this video is going to be recorded and uh, put up on all our social media platforms. So uh, if anyone wants to connect with Gaurav and book a mentoring session with him, the link will be provided in the description and you can visit gilda360.com and book a session. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Gaurav. Thank you for your time and uh, hope you uh, have a good day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye. Thank you.